So it's from Business Insider. This is talking about Lauren Simmons. Uh, she is the former stock trader. Uh, she says she doesn't see too many opportunities where putting your money into the stock market is going to grow. Here's where to invest your money right now instead. All right, so shout out to Lauren Simmons. Uh, she is very successful. This was actually posted just a few days ago. So this was posted uh, September 29th, 2022. So a few days ago, the picture of her. She has been on uh, the, pan the channel before. I did a reaction video to her being up on the CNBC Make It. So it's called Millennial Money. And she also does plenty of different uh, interviews with CNBC. She is very well known in the financial space. Uh, she is also on track to be making like over a million dollars a year. Something crazy, some crazy amount of money. I was like, oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, she, and then she also, I think she went to Georgia Tech. So she from Atlanta. Shout out to the Atlanta babies. All right, so uh, it says Lauren Simmons was the youngest ever female trader at the New York Stock Exchange. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. It says in 2017, Lauren Simmons made history by becoming the youngest trader at the New York Stock Exchange. She was also the second African-American female trader in the U New York Stock Exchange history. The 28-year-old has since left Wall Street to build her brand and pursue various endeavors from writing a book to creating a film based on her life experiences. She's also working as a financial coach at for, for BlackRock's iShares Future Ballers program, which helps top NBA prospects manage their money. All right. If you guys want to see that. Single. Let me pull it up right quick. Single way because I I know I want to show you guys uh that video that she did. Let me see. Let me see if I can pull it up right quick while I have you here. Here it is. I'll pull it over here. So this is it right here. This is the video that she did. So this is Lauren Simmons is on her page. I've seen players lose it all. That won't be me. This is my first time having my own money. I'm not going to throw it all away. Yeah, fine, so. All right, then. <laughs> Introducing the iShares Future Ballers. Together, we can all play the financial long game. All right, so. I have actually um, done a few interviews with people from BlackRock as well. Uh, so if you guys check out the Black Man in Tech channel, uh, it is also, it's on my uh, YouTube channel. If you guys want to check it out, I do interviews with, um, with other black men uh, to get their perspective of what it's like being in the tech industry. But I have done interviews with people from, from BlackRock and BlackRock has this whole a uh, documentary about how they own pretty much everything, right? They own pretty much everything because they are the investment managers of a lot of huge companies. And I met them through Technology of the Color. So they are actually a sponsor of Technology of the Color. So they, they are out there. They are trying to push a lot of uh, diversity hires as well. And uh, they are... Uh, they were hiring a lot of black people in the Atlanta area. So that was another thing. But they do say if you go to the offices in New York, it's pretty much just like the New York Stock Exchange. That's what, kind of, that's what it kind of looks like. All right, so let's continue on. So it says, her goal is to empower young minorities and provide them the tools necessary to be successful within their careers and financially. Right now, the former stock trader is cautioning against putting money in the stock market. 
if you have invested in the stock market and haven't taken your money out at this point, just ride out the wave. <laughs> she told Insider, but as far as from now until the end of the year and early 2023, I just don't see, see too many opportunities where putting your money into the stock market is going to grow. The S&P 500 is down 19% in 2022, and the market has further to fall, according to some experts. That's another thing I'm seeing as well. You see a lot of these large companies. I, I did a few videos about Adobe, uh, a huge, uh, huge company that created Photoshop and uh, Illustrator. They have a lot of different um, products that they have within their creative cloud for designers. And they actually are trying to acquire Figma, which is one of the industry standard softwares for designers and developers to communicate together in order to build websites and uh, front end development. So with that, uh, they are act they actually are one of the companies I'm going to talk about where even though the S&P 500 is down 19%, they took out, I want to, I forgot the exact amount. I think it's like $14 billion or right around there. They're actually trying to acquire Figma for $20 billion. And because of that, they're taking, they're taking out of their own stock, right? So you see Lauren Simmons saying, Hey, I don't see too many opportunities for the stock market to go up while you see even companies, large companies, well, very well off. They are sitting up here and they're purchasing other companies, taking out of their own stock and then putting it into another type of investment vehicle, right? So even what Lauren is saying for the individual makes sense but also for the company, it makes sense as well. For these large companies, it makes a lot of sense. Adobe is getting that bag. So let me go ahead and give a huge shout out to SS. Thank you so much. She says, thanks for sharing this info, BTB. Appreciate you for coming. Let me go ahead and give you the ka -ching. All right, so let's see. Thank you so much for your super chat. All right, so let's continue on uh, with this article. So it says, that's not to say you shouldn't be investing right now. Great point. It says as a savvy investor, you always want your money to be working for you. You want it to grow, says Simmons. I think the best place to put your money right now is in treasuries. A treasury bond is a type of debt security that's distributed by distributed and backed by the US government. They are low risk and highly liquid. Me highly liquid meaning you can get your money back. They don't pay the highest interest rates, but they are reliable. The US government has never defaulted on a debt. All right? That defaulting meaning that you pretty much give up on them ever paying back their debt. What she's saying is it's safe because they will pay it back for you. So if you were to call and ask for your debt, your security in this case, they will pay you back. All right. So, and right now the yield on a 52 year, a 52 week treasury bill, T bills are sold in terms ranging from a few days to 52 weeks is higher than ever in mid September if it hit 4%, which is the highest it's been in over a decade. Sure, 4% isn't the wonderful high percentage rate that people would like to see, and says Simmons, but it's something that is true. I think inflation is something crazy though. It's like something like 8% last time I checked, something crazy. But it is helping you to avoid losing out on your money. 
So I agree with what Lauren is saying. She also recommends looking into investing in Series 1 savings bonds, which are also backed by the government, and have interest rates that are regularly adjusted to account for the current inflation rate. Through October 2022, Series 1 bonds can be purchased at a rate of 9.62%. Right? That is, that's really good, actually. Like, man, Lauren is putting me on game. Hold on now, I need to, need to see about this. It says, after October, there will be a fresh new interest, there will be fresh new interest rates for Series 1 bonds. Those interest rates will go down and it won't be as high as 9%. So she's saying after October, they won't be as high. Uh, so it might be, or right around that time to go ahead and get into a series one bond from what she's saying. Of course, I'm not giving you any uh, investment advice or any financial advice or anything. Just going over this uh, financial information. All right. And this, of course, this is her opinion as well. All right. Simmons wants investors to know that there are options beyond traditional stock market investing. In fact, 90% of the men on the New York Stock Exchange floor don't invest in the stock market. Ooh, that's interesting. You would think that if you're working on a New York Stock Exchange floor, that you yourself would invest into stocks. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I heard that Tesla going up, but it sounds like 90% of the people who work with uh, New York Stock Exchange, they don't, they don't actually uh, invest in it. A lot of them have been there for quite some time. So they've gone through many different recessions and they've seen people lose it all. They, that doesn't mean that they don't invest. They just invest in other assets. All right. So I think that was a great article from Lauren.